Welcome to my game of the day. My second day in a row. Well, who's the lucky viewer then? Yeah, that's you. And in the game of the day, again taken from a Tata Steel competition, we're looking at two young, promising and strong players. With the white pieces we have Arion Tari of Norway, a very strong up and coming young player. And with the black pieces we have the Razor, Ali Razor Faruja. And a lot has been said about Ali Razor. Will he be the next world champion? Well, a lot of people think so. Do remember to like and subscribe to this channel. It all helps. And let's dive into this very exciting, tactical and chaotic encounter. The game starts with the Karakhan. And the Karakhan's a very good opening. It's a great way for Black actually to play for a win. That's what I've been told at top level, rather than the Sicilian, the Karakhan is maybe one of the most dynamic choices Black can play and Ali Reza here with the Black Pieces wants complications early. Now White plays the advanced variation and after Black develops the Bishop, the so-called short variation, Knight to F3 and Bishop to E2 and currently this is considered the most dangerous way to cause Black some problems in the Karakhan. Because the bishop here, well, is it strong or is it weak? That's one thing that is really what the battle is often about. Black saying, yeah, I've got a strong bishop outside of my pawn structure. But white is saying, your bishop is exposed there. I can attack it later on with my knight or my pawn. Knight e7 played. And look at this rather juicy pawn chain. Knight g6. Now black wants to get the bishop out and castle in a lot of lines. White simply castles first, knight d7, and now knight to e1. And I like this move. The knight gets out of the way and tries to reroute itself. Here, a very risky move from Ali Reza, but you wouldn't expect anything else. And this move is always a good move. Harry five, Harry five. And this is just trying to gain some space on the king side and potentially start some attack there later on. Most importantly though, we're stopping g4, this move we mentioned earlier. Playing against our opponent's ideas. This is a key concept in chess. If you want to do an instant thing to improve, I always say, rather than just obsessing with your own ideas, then try to get into your opponent's mind. What is my opponent playing? How can I stop them? I always think chess is also a reflection on life. You know, Rather than obsessing on ourselves, we should try to get in other people's minds and help where we can. I suppose in chess we're not trying to help them though. Bishop e3, and this is following established theory. I think an interesting novelty here would actually be knight to c2. With the knight coming to this square, trying to take advantage of that bishop, that's certainly the way I'd play this position. Black now goes queen b6, nibbling the pawn there. And now b3, might as well not lose that one. And the first novelty, f6. Really aggressive play, opening up the position. The black king is not safe either, but black really wants to get rid of this pawn on e5. This is a major sort of fawn in black's position. If we can get rid of that pawn, our pieces have potential to gain better squares and attack the white king. White grabs the pawn on h5, but this is double-edged because black opens up the file but fortune is supposed to favor the brave f takes e5 and now g4 and i i don't like this move now in other positions g4 is a decent move but when your king is so well protected why move your pawn in front of it when there's open lines in other positions you don't have this open h file facing you so g4 is better but here it seems very loose that king is like no come back pawn where are you going don't run away from me don't leave me and i think a better idea would have been something simple like bishop takes bishop pawn takes e5 threatening the queen and now f4 keeping that pawn stabilized in the center back to the game g4 and now a brilliant move it's all about energy and initiative in these positions. You don't want to retreat, you want to keep coming forwards. You don't need to say that twice to the razor. Rook takes h5. 
And this is a great way, giving up the exchange, but gaining tempo. I remember talking to the legendary player Bronstein, and Bronstein told me that in the opening and early middle game, this is early middle game, that the rooks were actually, in his eyes, less less powerful than the minor pieces. Rooks were only very good in endings and certain middle games, but he said knights and bishops, if he got a chance to give his rook up for a knight and bishop early on, he would do that. Quite a controversial point of view, but you can see that after knight to f4, black's minor pieces, that's the bishop or the knight, come flying towards white's king with some vicious intent. And now pawn takes e5, and this seems quite logical, but it's not the best move. It was time here for white to play something like knight to f3, just trying to bring some pieces into the middle. And this move would have kept it roughly even. The problem with taking with the pawn, which of course is natural, you get the pawn back, you throw in the queen, is that it forces white to face the move knight to h3 check. And after king g2, well, this knight is very badly placed, and here Ali Reza should have played the logical bishop c5, getting rid of the only developed white piece. c5 was played, which is also, I think, a very decent move. And now f4. You can't allow the other knight to fly into the position. And look at the pieces here. It's like someone's got a bag of pieces, shaked them up and just gone over the chessboard. They're kind of all over the place. Is this knight good or strong? Is it a wayward traveller? on its route to victory, or has it fallen off the path and going to be eaten by some bears? I don't know what's going on about. Or is Black's material disadvantage going to be good, or is he going to suffer? It's really interesting. Now Queen c6, lining the Queen up against the White King. This has to be blocked, so now Knight to f3 is a good move, and now just castles queenside. And this is again a very logical move. Even when you sacrifice material and you're going for the attack, as black clearly is with the pieces here, the way you should ask yourself about what to do next is have a look at your pieces which are developed, these two, and the pieces that are around your opponent's king. If you can't do anything with those pieces, look at how you can bring in reinforcements. Chess is really a symphony of many different parts, pieces, and you need to get all those pieces boogieing together, working together, connecting to try and do something nasty to the enemy king. So castles I like. The rook has some potential on the d-file and maybe it can swing over to the h-file. White develops his last piece and now knight to b6. It's clear that black wants to play a move such as d4 opening up that area of the board. And black's compensation here is really the white king is a little bit weak. Black's king quite safe. Now amazingly Queen e1 was played, which is quite normal to try to help protect the king by bringing more pieces over. But in actual fact, king g3 is the computer's top suggestion. This is just the kind of position where computer programmers are really good. Not programmers, I don't know if they're good. Programs, I think is what I was trying to say. Computer programs are really strong because they sort of, they know, they just number crunch. They know where to put the king, they spot tactics. Humans, not as good as computers in these chaotic positions. But this move actually is quite a good idea, just getting the king off that sort of diagonal. The position would have remained very murky after a move such as d4. And this is sacrificing another pawn, but to vacate this square here for the black knight. Another very clever idea that Ali Reza played. One thing that strikes me about Ali Reza is his great understanding of where his pieces should go, releasing their full potential, getting them into the attack. That combined with his aggressive instinct, his tactical vision, and his way of making the position very messy like this in order to play for a win is certainly something which is a joy to behold. Now, in the game, Queen E1 is played, and here, Bishop E7 just simply getting another piece into the game. Rook c1 aimed against d4, but this doesn't stop black from playing d4. Pawn takes d4, the knight slides in, and now, funnily enough, knight to c4, a very normal looking move, is a mistake. The king should have stepped back, but such a hard move for a human to see. This pawn 
couldn't really be defended. Ali Reza takes that one. And again, now king to h1 would have been better. The problem with white capturing here is that the bishop releases control of d4. So now the black rook can enter in. Knight takes f4 check, king g1. And it's clear to see that with the queen on this dangerous diagonal, a knight just hovering there, ready to go, <laughs> pounce. And this bishop, and even the other bishop coming in, black's pieces just have that harmonious feel to them. Great play from black. I should also say great, you know, Tarry does really well here in a difficult position. He holds on and he keeps making it very difficult for Ali Razor. Bear in mind, they're both getting very short a time here. So mistakes are, are much more likely to occur. Now, Bishop G4 was played and this is maybe where that time pressure shows a little bit. A much better move would have been the kind of obvious rook takes d4. Again, this is the principle of if your pieces which are developed, so I would say these three are the main ones, can't do anything, bishop g4 doesn't do anything too scary. Look at your reinforcements. In this position, the rook and bishop should be brought into the game. This rook can never be taken because the queen is allowed to come in with the kiss of death checkmate. So bishop g4 played, okay, still uncomfortable for white. White defends and now the rook comes in. All of black's pieces just dancing around the board here. Knight d6, white trying to complicate. King b8, queen e3. White is just trying to hold everything together like some super glue. Super glue looking a little bit loose here. This queen is trying to glue itself to protect the knight, protect the rook. And now actually even just the simple bishop h5 would have been good, but bishop g5, bringing the last piece in, just feels right to me. The computer doesn't agree, but look at it. Every black piece working its wonders. There's now some threats of the knight moving with a discovered check, what I call an ambush, and the black bishop would be able to whip off that queen. Again, the knight on f3 can't move. You could say that this is actually in what we call a pin. It's pinned down, because if it moved, queen g2 is again rather stinky for white. So here, white plays rook takes c5. Now there was only one way to defend here and uh, this is a very hard move to find. The move to defend is king to h1. And again, the computer suggests this, but it looks so illogical moving the king into a pin. I suppose you could say that knight was pinned anyway, so what's the problem? And the idea of this is just to try and avoid any sort of knight ideas. One nice line also involved around this move is that white has ideas of queen takes d4. In the last position, white couldn't have played this because of knight e2, which is a fork, forking, pinning all over the shop. So for example, after king h1, if black plays, let's say, bishop h3 attacking the rook, now queen takes d4 and white's able to swap off a number of pieces and this is a very good tactic when your king is under pressure just try to get as many pieces off the board as you can get rid of those dangerous assassins which are trying to put your king in an early grave so rook takes c5 was played and now queen takes c5 knight takes g5 this is white's idea and with seconds on the clock, now black goes wrong. Now, I would encourage you here to see in a minute, I'm going to say pause. If you can pause the video and improve on Ali Razor's play. Now, Ali Razor played knight to e2 check, which seems like a perfectly okay idea. But he misses a fantastic win, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So pause now if you want to try and improve on his play. What an amazing win here is actually not putting the knight on this square. Remember, checks are not always good. Checks often help your opponent escape. Checks are only good if they achieve something tangible. Much better move was bishop e2. And this is quite a striking and strong move. Yes, black creates the threat of attacking the rook. And let's say rook takes f4 here, and now white goes a piece up. Well, the winning idea after this is just rook to d1 check. The queen is now attacked, so the king has to step forwards. And there's a lovely little idea. Rook to f1 check. 
The king takes the bishop. You might be thinking, what on earth is black doing? Well, after rook takes e, rook e1 check, it becomes all clear. King takes, queen takes e3, picking up the rook with a winning position. Yeah, it's complicated, but you know, I never, I never profess to say chess is an easy game. And what else can be played after bishop e2? Well, rook to e1 runs into rook to d1, and this is just fantastic. Allowing white to take your queen, but now rook to e1 check, the king only has one square, knight to d3, and black's pieces work so well, black's gonna take the queen and be a whole rook up. Fantastic stuff there. Missed though by the long, young Ali Razor. This is the kind of position, it reminds me of the great Kasparov playing such a, an attack, and I think Kasparov, no offense to Ali Razor, would have found this kind of finish in his, in his prime. And this is something that Ali Razor needs to work towards. The game continued after knight e2, just king g2 here. Now this can't be taken because of, well, in this position, rook to f4 check, stopping white's rook coming to f8, and the queen is gonna drop next move. So the king does have to move, and now, well, it's a draw, and they agreed a draw. I know it's still a very complex situation here after this king g2, but with seconds on the clock, they've had enough fun here, and uh, they, decided to shake hands in in again what is what is still a complex situation i'll let you discuss the finer point, points of this position here maybe you can try to improve in even this final position i think it's good to discuss that in the comments below so you can give me grief why didn't you analyze the final position use your own brain occasionally it's good i know i've got a beautiful face and i'm lovely explaining things but use that old noggin up there boys and girls Anyway, very interesting game, great play, great attacking play from Black, but also great defense. White made it as hard as he can. Remember, like and subscribe to the chess.com channel. Thank you for watching this game of the day, and I'll be back in the future for more games in this fantastic tournament, the Tata Steel competition.